cache control headers tell the browser whether or not the server wants the browser to store copies of the files. Usually, caching is desired. We want to make sure that the browser keeps copies of JavaScript styles, images, and pictures so that it doesn't need to download those resources multiple times. That would cause the server to have to work a lot harder to send duplicate files than it should. Plus, it's going to affect network bandwidth of the users and possibly affect their browsing experience. But there are some files that may contain user data, and we would want to use cache control in those cases to keep the browser from caching files that might contain sensitive data. There's also a feature in the cache control where we can tell the browser it's okay to cache conditionally. In other words, go ahead and cache as long as the response doesn't contain a certain HTTP header, like set cookie. Set cookie would indicate the presence of a cookie, so maybe sensitive material, and we probably wouldn't want the browser to cache in that case. The directive cache control no caching for set cookie tells the browser it's okay to cache as long as the response doesn't contain a set cookie statement. So we have two situations. For files that we want to cache, we can issue cache control no cache equals set cookie. For files which we do not want to cache, we can use cache control no store no cache. And its companion, Pragma no cache, the HTTP 1.0 version of cache control. So if the content type is something like a JavaScript font, image, style, anything that's static, we would use cache control no cache of a set cookie. And then for files that are dynamic in nature and therefore could potentially contain user information, like HTML, JSON, SOAP, XML, and text, we would instruct the browser not to cache these types. There are several different ways to accomplish this using conditional headers in the web server or using headers that are set unless the application overrides them. One possible way to do this is using a general header and then overriding that header in cases where we want to cache the files or avoid caching the files as the case may be. So we'll take a look at one approach that works for this particular site. If we go to the configuration files. I have a file where I keep the header configuration. So in here, we have the general header that's going to get set, and that's the no cache equals set cookie. However, if the file being grabbed off of the file system happens to end in .php, then we'll go ahead and issue the cache control no store no cache header instead. Effectively, we're overriding the first header. And we'll also issue that pragma no cache as well. Now, this particular method works for this site because the only files that are dynamic in this particular application are PHP files. If a site had more file types that were potentially sensitive, we could use the files match directive and list out the various kinds of file types. But we don't necessarily have to use this approach. We could also do a header set in if empty and set the general header as a set if empty directive, like seen in this example up here. And then that way the application could override the directive. But that technique is difficult in this case because the Pragma no cache has no counterpart. We either have the header or we don't. It's not a situation where there's another value that we could override Pragma no cache with. So that for this particular situation, using the general header that gets overridden for certain file types seems to be a better approach that is also fairly simple to implement. So let's watch this in action. We'll go ahead and watch the headers with HTTP header live. We'll browse to the site. And for this index.php, 
which of course is a PHP file, we can see that we have cache control, no store, no cache, and then we also have private no cache. However, if we go look at some other files, we can see that the cache control, no cache equals set cookie is issued for those. The technique that you use can vary and whatever works is the right answer for your particular site. But the idea is, is that we want to cache static files, assuming they don't have any sensitive data in them. And in order to create, increase the performance of the site as much as we can. However, if we have some files that are dynamic in nature, so they probably are likely to contain some sort of user data or sensitive data, be careful to issue the cache control headers for those files so that the browser doesn't accidentally save a copy.